All right, now that Jump Festa is over, I wanted to make a video and see who can make the best predictions of what's going to happen, not just for Dragon Ball, but just anime in general over the course of the next year. In case you missed it, Jump Festa dropped some bombs this past weekend. You know, we got Bleach coming back. We got uh, confirmation. They're adding more DLC to Dragon Ball Fighters, which still blows my mind. I mean, I'm not surprised. I'm not shocked because of how successful the series is. But it was just like unexpected. And it's like, oh, snap. By the way, we'll talk about that here in a second. But before I hop into it, I want to see who has the best predictions of what they think is going to happen, whether it is just for Dragon Ball related stuff, games, anime, yada, 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 or anything that was announced in, in the past weekend for Jump Faster down below. So at any point, comment something, and then if you're right in the next year, if you remember that is, I want you to come back to this video and be like, Ryan, I called it! Look, here's a screenshot of it! And it better not be edited. If it's an edited screenshot, I'm going to assume that you changed it after something happened. So yeah, uh, comment several times if you have to, if you got to make corrections or whatever. But yeah, okay. So first things first, let's talk about fighters. You know, fighters is interesting. You know, they, they announced that Android 21 is coming out and there's a lot of confusion about that. So first of all, my prediction is we are going to get five characters. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and toss that. We're going to get five characters next year. Um, and it's going to probably consist of the lab 21 i bet you lab android 21 is gonna be free dlc and then they're gonna announce the actual dlc roster along with it whether it is four extra characters that are payable or if it's gonna be five in general but i'm expect i'm gonna go ahead and predict at least five characters and of those five i'm gonna go ahead and toss out we're gonna get majin vegeta we're going to get uh topo which i know a lot of people want Topo for some reason i'm not the biggest topo fan but i'm gonna toss him out there because to topo has a lot of potential i'm also going to do the the obvious one omega shenron and of course you can't have DLC without another Goku. So I'm going to predict Turles and Super Saiyan 4 Goku as the other characters coming out. If I have to take one off, I would probably pick Topo. Topo is like a maybe. But for some reason, he's got this weird fan base. So a lot of people really like the character. And of course, I'm talking about God Destruction Topo, not the regular Topo. If you like the regular Topo, we got to talk. But yeah, those are my predictions. Let me know your thoughts down below. And but by the way, what I want to talk about is, is a lot of people... We're coming into my mentions and my comments. We're talking about like, really, this is what we're getting after a year of no content? Did they give us just Android 21? Listen, man, <laughs> you have to understand. To those that actually play Dragon Ball Fighters, and the reason I say actually play Dragon Ball Fighters is because some people keep saying like, oh, it's gonna be a reskin or a costume. And it's like you probably have never played Dragon Ball Fighters. Dragon Ball Fighters, when they dro whenever they drop a new character, it's a brand new character from the ground up. This is not a skin. You know how I know? Because Android 21 in the game fights with a tail. That's her whole thing. She has this crazy tail that makes her very, very good. And this 21, Lab Code 21, doesn't have a tail. <laughs> you can't just drop her and then have her be a skin with no tail. That doesn't make any sense. So my theory is they're going to like to kind of, I guess, start the next season of the game. They're going to drop uh, Lab Joy 21. I'm going I'm to call her that as a free DLC and then from there they'll announce the actual season and then we're going to get more content over the course of the next year. The big one that a lot of people have in mind is whether or not we get rollback netcode and that's still a big what if. And I'm kind of hoping that they spent the last year actually working on rollback netcode which is why we didn't get any content before they start pushing out more content. Because let's be real, if you add rollback netcode to Dragon Ball Fighters and then focus on content, that game can go on for literally a decade. I'm not even kidding. You can just keep releasing characters every single year and people will play the game forever. Because netcode is so important in fighting games and if you can master that, in any game actually, you master the netcode, we are willing to play that for a very long time. So yeah, that's my predictions. Let me know your thoughts down below. Now, the next one is, is again, the beauty of Dragon Ball games is we have a little bit of everything. The next one I want to talk about is Dragon Ball Xenoverse. Wow, my voice kind of cracked. I've been, <laughs> it's been a long day. Dragon Ball Xenoverse 2. Uh, the meme with Xenoverse 2 is the game is never going to end. And again, that's not a bad thing. So we know that we're going to get more DLC, um, especially the one that we voted for. You know, we're going to get the, the UI Omen. I still have a theory that they're going to give us more characters from that actual vote. So I'm going to go ahead and predict that Dispo as well as Bergamo are also going to come out with that DLC pack as well as everything else that they've already been teasing. That game is going to not end anytime soon. But my big prediction is, is after they announce, or I guess when they drop that big DLC that we've been, uh, I guess, getting hyped for, the big next thing is going to be they're going to announce the next series of dlc that are probably going to drop towards the end of the year and that's it <laughs> i don't have that much hope for xenoverse because at this point the code in the game is so old that all they can really do is just add more dlc some more moves and characters and kind of keep the game going look it's a great game xenoverse is a fantastic game it's got its issues for what it has but for what we are looking for as dragon ball fans it is a pretty playable game and the word playable is very very important here 
And it's also kind of iffy because some people argue it's not playable because of how the online version of the game is. Look, if you hop in a game with your friends, it works. <laughs> it just works. Just stay away from ranked and online uh, casual fights and you will have a good time. It's just the way we go about for Xenoverse. If for whatever reason they, they can make the, the netcode better, which at this point we can accept they won't. Again, similar to what I said about fighters, the game's going to go on for a very long time. But my pretty simple prediction is the game is just going to get DLC and that's about it. They're just going to kind of pump, pump characters here and there and then call it a day. The only question is, is after they drop the UI Omen and, you know, potentially Bergamo and Dispo, whatever else, what is next? And I don't really know. The, the game literally has every single character. And all I can think about is the side characters like, you know, I don't know, second form cell, dildo freeze on stuff like that. But that's not really exciting. So I don't know what else they can really do there unless they dabble in the Drama Heroes universe, which I don't think that they will. But if you want to predict that and you happen to be right, kudos to you. So yeah, mobile games. At this point, mobile games are here to stay. Both Legends and Dokkan are going to have a pretty big future over the course of the next game. Oh, next game. The next year. You know, uh, uh, Dokkan is about to celebrate the seven year anniversary, which to me is still kind of crazy. Seven years for a mobile game to exist is wild. Seven years for any game to exist is crazy. But a mobile, game, a mobile game alone is wild, you know. I, I, my big prediction right now is I feel like because uh, Dokkan is so old, it needs to have this next big crazy update that really breathes life into it. I mean, the thing is, you can just keep dropping the same LRs, the same characters every few weeks, and people will still play. But I feel like in order to really expand on the longevity of the game, you gotta add something else that's kind of like mind-blowing and different, but different in a good way. Because the thing is, if you add something different, that's, you know, like for example, like Battlefield of 1.0 was, that was drastically different, but wasn't necessarily fun. And we don't wanna really see that. I don't really play Dokkan anymore, so I don't really have much to say about the game. Maybe if you still play, you can tell me what you personally want to see. But I predict that they're going to drop something big and different and drastic that will really breathe a lot of air into that game. And then we'll see it go into the 8-year anniversary and beyond. So we'll see what happens with that. Not really much to say to add to that because, again, Dokkan's been around for so long. But, again, I feel like something different is going to happen, which will be really hype and dope for everybody that still plays the game. Dragon Ball Legends is going to have an absolute interesting year. And the reason why I say interesting is because... I don't know which direction the game is about to go. Because look, here's the thing. Dragon Ball Legends does this thing, if you've been playing the game, where they do amazing content updates for the longest. And then they decide, you know what? Let's go 20 steps backwards. They have not done that in a while. Uh, if you disagree, that's on you. But in my opinion, I think the game, for what it's been releasing over the course of the past like three-ish months, even maybe longer, has been pretty good. I feel like they've been doing too good. So <laughs> we're overdue for them taking us 10 steps back in the game. And my biggest fear right now is the drop and the releases of Ultra units, you know. I still predict that next week for Christmas, we're gonna get our first Symbol Ultra, and it's going to be either great or awful, depending on how the rates are and how the balance of the overall game is. Because my theory that I had a while back is that once Ultras come out, and they start releasing Ultras over the course of the next, like, you know, couple of months, I mean, they're not gonna be dropping every single week and every single month like they have been doing with uh, Legends Limited units. But I feel like Ultras over the course of the next couple of years could be detrimental to the game because they have those extra abilities. And at some point, mark my words, we're gonna get to the point where there'll be no point in running other units other than Ultras in the whole team because they get those extra boosts. So that's my biggest fear. So again, Ultras are either going to be great for the game or just awful and depending on how they do it and how they balance it over the course of the next year and a half, it's gonna dictate how the game does later this year. And honestly, I don't know where it's gonna go. And just like with Dokkan, even though even though Legends is, you know, has more gameplay aspects than just, you know, clicking the screen and popping a bubble, Legends, I feel like, still also needs something that'll add freshness to the game over the course of the next year as well. I mean, this doesn't need it as bad as Dokkan because Dokkan's been around for like the longest. And I'm not trying to compare games. I'm just trying to compare with what you do in said games. Um, if Legends was seven years old, I would want to see some new aspects to the game as well. I'm hoping that we do see this big guild update that they've been talking about for the past year that they actually actually push back until who knows when and they do something with that. And I also want to see what Ultras do to the game. So honestly, I don't have much of a prediction for this game. It's it's a big, it's a big blank void right now. <laughs> I can say either it's going to be really, really good or really, really bad. Now the good news is the, the team does, they do listen, they do listen. So whatever they screw up, we can assume they will fix over the course of the next couple of months. It's just the question is how much damage will be done in the meantime and what does it mean for the game in the long run based on the decision that they do. Like I said, I think Ultras are a terrible idea just because over the course of, you know, the future span of the game, too much Ultras is basically going to be what's going to decide 
how you play the game. And there's no point in running, you know, Legends Limited or anything else in the game when you have literally Ultras that boost each other with those extra bonuses with the Ultra abilities. So, we'll see what happens. But yeah. And finally, I want to talk about Dragon Ball Super Hero. Dragon Ball Super Super Hero. I think the movie is going to be great for what it is. You know, I, I know I made my video the other day talking about how I'm still not completely sold on the movie. But again, I feel like once the movie comes out and we all watch it in theaters, the nostalgia will kick in. We'll get super excited. We'll see Gohan do cool stuff. And hopefully Goku and Vegeta won't see the show in the end. It's going to be entertaining for what it is. But unfortunately, I my big prediction for the year is I don't think, and I want to be wrong on this, but I don't think 2022, outside the movie, will be a, the return of the anime yet again. You know, I, we've been talking about, uh, not well, not we as in me, but the community has been talking about the return of the anime for like the longest, and I feel like we're still not there yet. Honestly, I think they realize that it's probably better off to just release, you know, the games, updates for the games, and drop a maybe semi annual or like once every two year movie as opposed to bringing the anime back and then be stressed around that on a weekly basis so i feel like we're probably still not anywhere close to the anime come back and this is one thing that i want to be wrong for but i feel like my prediction right now is that the anime not count as a movie but the anime like a weekly anime is not coming back in 2022 unfortunately that sucks but the good news is if they keep basically releasing manga content you know uh, the monthly manga by the time I say 2023 hits and for even potentially 2024, they'll have enough source to make the anime for. And maybe they might be even they might be doing that. Maybe they're waiting for the manga to get a lot of story written now. That way they can start dropping the anime on a weekly basis and at that point have something to kind of work off of as opposed to just you know rushing it on a weekly basis like they have before. So yeah, comment section below. Let me know your thoughts on what predictions you have for 2022 in regards to not just Dragon Ball specifically, but anything that's showing up at Jump Festa, any game announcements. Breakers, I think. Break, look, here's the thing. Breakers is going to be one of those fun games that I feel like is going to be so niche. There's going to be like a super niche community behind it. I love to play the hell out of that game. It's also going to tap into that community of people that play games like Dead by Daylight, Friday the 13th, and stuff like that. And like I said, I'm a big fan of it. I'm excited to play uh, Breakers when it comes out, whenever it's supposed to come out in 2022. But it's not like one of those games that I'm going to be dying to play. And honestly, I kind of wish that we would get something else along with that. Like, let's say, another 3D Arena Fighter. or You know what? I'm going to just say it. Bring back the Budokai style games. Let me get my 2D, 3D-ish game that we grew up with. So something like Burst of Budokai will be amazing to kind of toss in the mix. Because right now we got Xenoverse for like the 3D arena fighters. We got fighters for an actual fighting game. I think it's time we come back to the 2D fighters like Budokai and Burst of to kind of toss it in it as well. Because that will make the rest of us happy. If that comes out next year, I'm going to be so stoked. It, it won't. But you know what? Just kind of toss it out there the universe. Because if you put it in the universe, it might happen. So yeah. Okay, I'm gonna end the video right here. So let me know your best predictions for the next year down below. And anything that happens, if you guess it right, I want you to screenshot the comment and show it to me at some point in the next year or so. So yeah. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. My name is Ryan Style. I'll see you in the comment section below. Peace.